in this lesson, we're going to talk about the rational root theorem. So let's say, for example, we had an equation like x3 minus 3x squared plus 6x take away 9 equals to 0. According to the fundamental theorem of algebra, this equation should have three answers. Okay, so let's quickly write that down. Three answers. But we don't know if those answers are going to be real or if they are going to be imaginary. But we know that there will be three. We could use Descartes' rule of signs, which would help us to see how many positive roots there might be, how many negative roots there might be, and how many imaginary roots there might be. That is what we looked at in the previous lesson. Now, let's say, for example, that there are going to be some positive and negative roots. The rational root theorem gives us a good guideline of what those answers might be. It doesn't tell us exactly what they are, but it tells us what they might be, okay? So it doesn't tell us anything about imaginary. It only tells us about any rational roots. Rational roots are nice numbers like three, negative one, one over three, so that's any type of fraction, uh, negative six, negative two. It doesn't tell us the exact answers though. It just gives us a guideline of what the answers might be. So what we can say is that the answers, answers, well, what's the value for answer, right, answers? The answers might be, okay. So what you do is you take this number at the end and you take this number in the front and what I want you to do is go find all the, let's start with the nine. We're gonna go find all the factors of nine. So the factors of nine could be um, plus or minus one, plus or minus three, and plus or minus nine. Then go find all the factors of this number. So that would just be plus or minus one. Then to find all the different answers, I want you to divide um, all of these factors by all of these ones. So for example, that would be plus or minus one over one, so you're always gonna take this ones divided by this ones, okay? So that could be that. It could be um, plus or minus three over plus or minus one. Sorry, that should say plus or minus. It could be plus or minus nine over plus or minus one. And so those are all the possible answers that we might get. So for example, if we use a plus at the top and a negative at the bottom, that would be positive one over negative one, which is negative one. Or you could say, for example, um, a positive one at the top and a positive one at the bottom, so that would be equal to one. Um, here you could, you could use any combination, okay? But these are the possibilities of what we could get. So let's actually go write out every single combination. So here we could use, um, we could get one, or you could get negative one. Here you could say positive three divided by positive one, which would be three, or you could have a positive and a negative, which would give you negative three. Here you could s somehow get a positive nine or a negative nine. So these are the possible rational roots. It doesn't mean that those are gonna be the roots, but it could be one of those, or, or one or two of those. Okay, let's try another example. Okay, so here we go. So what you do is you take this number and you take all of its factors. So that's just gonna be um, plus or minus one and plus or minus five. Then you're gonna take this number, and it, so it's the same thing, um, plus or minus one and plus or minus five. Then to go work out all the possible rational roots, you just get all the different combinations. So you could have a positive five divided by a um, positive five, which is one, or you could say, um, positive five divided by one, which is five. You could say negative five over positive five, which is negative one. You could say five over negative one, which is negative five, or you could have negative five over positive one, which is negative five. So your, posit your, your possible rational roots would be one, five, negative one, and negative five. Or you could even do another one. I actually forgot about one. You could say one for this one, and then five, so, so you could use the one for this one and a five for that one, so that would be one over five. Or you could even get negative one over five. So these are all the possible roots, or rational roots.